Hi, this is Mark Hauser, and thanks for coming back to our blog. We really appreciate you coming back, and we hope that we're going to be able to really give you information that's going to help you to move forward in understanding about this industry. We are all about P Property Adjustment National Association, or what we call ourselves PANA. We're all about making sure that people are properly trained in this industry. Um, best way I can put it is that uh, uh, if you wanted to be able to know what you wanted to know about an industry, that that kind of way of training, that kind of information, that kind of support, um, if that's what you were thinking about, that's what we looked at and when we started to develop this so that we would say to ourselves, what would we want? What would we need to be able to you know, really help a lot of people and changing a lot of people's lives? And that's really what we did. So, I mean, you can go to adjustingschool.com and you can learn more about us, again, adjustingschool.com. And, uh, you know, take the time to, you know, shake our trees, see what we're all about, read our, you know, syllabuses, you know, get an understanding about what we do. And I hope you join because we're looking for at least, you know, 10,000 new members minimum. And today, right now, I could put 200,000 easily into the United States and we would just barely scratch the surface of what this country really needs. And there's just more work than you can ever imagine. And we're constantly looking to try to develop new viral ways of getting business consistently and making even more money on everything you do. So, without going any farther, let's talk about what we're going to be talking about today, the tip of the day. The tip of the day is dealing with the documentation with your client, okay? There's, most people think, oh, I just signed a contract with them and, you know, and maybe it's a approved contract by the state or whatever, and that's what I send out. And a lot of times they'll send these things out to the insurance company to everybody else and all that kind of stuff. And that's the wrong thing to do, it really is. Uh, so I'm going to go through the four. And the first one is, is the contract itself. The second one is a, called a representation authorization. Next one is called a limited power of attorney. And the last one is called a homeowner borrower authorization. Okay. And when you go into our site, we have all four of these documents there for you. And it's real easy to set up for yourself. But this is, and there's different reasons for why you have what you have. First one, contract. Contract's basically there for you, between you and the client, to be able to determine what you're going to be working on and how much you're going to get paid for what you do. Okay? Pretty much that's really it. The only other things are, you know, you know, right of right of this cancellation, which changes in every state. Some states are three, some states are four days, some states are non-business days, some states are business days. Makes no difference. The client has the right to be able to cancel in, in whatever time it is for your state to do that. So, next one is a, called a representation authorization, and the reason that is there is because that's really just about the location, the client and that you're going to be representing them. You're going to be taking on the position of the client's rights in that particular claim. Now, the reason why we have that one signed is because that's the, that's the document that we sent to the insurance company because they don't have the right to know how much you're making on the claim. You should never give that information away. And the reason why is because technically you're a contractor and the contractor uh, the insurance company does not have the right to know what the contractor is making on any particular part of anything with the claim. Nothing. They don't have that right. They don't have that ability to know. It's not there. It's not within any documentation. It's not within any law. They just don't have the right to do that or to know that. And we don't want to give them that. Biggest reason out there is that they'll try to use it as a weapon. They'll try to go. You're making, do you realize that he's making 20% 20, 20 on you? Well, number one, there's no limit on what you can make on that, and you didn't choose, like a lot of companies, like a few companies I won't mention, Metro, but anyway, that, that will charge 35% or more, which is ridiculous. You know, they're not attorneys, and you, you need to make sure that you guarantee the client apples for apples and still cover your fee, period. And you can do that on small claims because you don't have contents, remember, you don't have contents dealing there. So in content, because contents are actual cash value and you want to make sure that you get everything for the client. So on small claims, you just don't see contents, barely or rarely ever. So therefore, it's really easy for you to guarantee because of the 10 and 10 overhead and profit, which, you know, the three tradesmen's rule, if you don't know it, you know, you, know, you should be part of our associations, you know, all the details on that. Know where the case law came from, Pennsylvania. 
Um, and to know understanding why that is, why it is, and so that you don't send them anything but a representation or authorization plus a copy of your license. That's all. Number three, we call this a limited power, no, limited power of attorney, which allows you to sign the name for the client on the check, because the check's going to come with three names. Your name, the client's name, and the lender's name, if they have a lender. And so you want to make sure that um, you can speed up the process. And the way I sell that is actually to let them know that, you know, I say, how, do you, how would you like your money? Fast or faster? And they always go, oh, faster. And I go, great. Well, that's what this document's for. Because the time and back and forth with you and trying to get you signed and trying to send it back so we can send it to the lender, and, you know, all that takes time. But if we can just automatically, as soon as we get the check, just take care of it, bam, get it over with, and move on so we can get it to the next phase, speeds up a lot of time. Could speed up as much as two weeks sometimes, depending upon what's happening in their life or even in what's happening with you and your business. So that's a great document to have. Good thing, though, to have is somebody else that's also a, uh, a notary public so that you can speed that up. Because many states, that's what they want you to be, is a notary public to, to document that for their laws and their regulations. Next one is a, is, a, is a homeowner borrower authorization. And the reason why that is is because, you know, lenders are bureaucrats. Just like everybody else, they have procedures for every single thing that they do. You know, they go down a list exactly what they want. And one of the things is that they send a check back to the homeowner, not to you, because it's part of their procedure. So when you fill out the homeowner borrower authorization and you send that in, you now are fit into that slot. And now it's automatically for them to send it back to you, and which is where you want it to come to. Because remember, the check comes with three names. The first signature is the homeowner's, the second one is the lender, and the third one is yours. And then you put it into a escrow account, which is nothing more than a checking account, regular checking account. And then you're going to then take that, and then you're going to then cut two checks of that. First one, to the homeowner for their amount. Second one, for your check, for your fee, for what you've done for the client. And then you then take that check, and you then deposit that check into the uh, business account, your business account which meant then you then pay anybody else that's done anything on the claim through that business account. So it shows no commingling of funds. And that's pretty much the documentation for, uh, for signing up a claim. You know, and then there's other ones for as far as uh, uh, you know, letters and, and proof of laws. We'll talk about that later. But right now you know exactly what it talks about when you're talking about documentation for signing up a, a claim. Now, small commercial. We have people all across the country that are literally changing people's lives. Uh, we have people like Wakamba, we have people like Ed Kopp, we have people like Eric Baker, John, John Melly, uh, Dwight Ramsey, love Dwight by the way, really, we were actually we're now working with him directly on a special project. And just hundreds and hundreds of people all throughout the United States changing people's lives. David Pittman, we're literally changing a whole state. And he's working also with Eric Baker right now, which is a great team. And, and that's the other thing. You can team up with our, with one member, with another member, and working and solving problems. And, and major disasters happen, and you come in, and they come in, and they work with you, and you work with them. And it's just an awesome way of working. Because most public justice don't like each other. I could tell you stories. Most public justice that aren't part of our association they tolerate each other. They're not like attorneys. Attorneys, you know, man, they'll, they'll fight and they'll beat each other up in a courtroom and then afterwards go out and have dinner with each other or go play a round of golf. Just not the same in our industry, which is a shame. You know, they're all trying to keep their own little thief them. And that's because there's no major organization teaching this except for us in the United States. Nobody teaches every single aspect of public justice from beginning to end like we do. Um, it's because they wanted to keep that to themselves, and they didn't want to. And nobody wanted to be the first to share all this information. And most people don't even know how to teach. That's something you know they can do it themselves, but to teach somebody else how to do it, that's a little different. And it's mainly because we're teaching you how to think, analyze, ask the right questions. In Proverbs it says, "When you ask the right questions, you get the right answers." Okay. It also says that in Ecclesiastes, um, which. Gives you an idea of where I, where and how I think. 
But here's the thing that, that's really important, is that because we do that, you know, we charge what we consider a reasonable amount for what we do. And uh, I have a lot of people who have told me that are in the informational business or telling me that we undercharge. We don't, we don't charge anything because we're kind of like in the real estate business. You know, we should be charging 5000 10000 I'm sitting there going, I'm trying to create an army. I'm trying to create an army of people who care, trust us to help them to beat on the insurance companies, to take care of the client, to give them the check that they were told that they were not allowed to have. was the check that they were originally supposed to have. This is Mark Houser, and I'm saying thank you for coming to my blog. See you next Monday.